Hello everybody, it's good to be with you again. Today we're going to finish off looking at the book of Daniel. Here's how it ends. Chapter 12, verse 13. As for you, go your way till the end, and rest. Then at the end of days you will rise to receive your reward. I love how the book of Daniel ends because in a way it's a contrast to how it has been up to that point. Daniel has been making these bold prophecies of national, international situations that will occur. He's been making notes of these heroes of the faith, including himself and the, the grand narrative of which they're part. But after all that, God's last words to him are, but you go your way and rest, and you will rise at the end of days to receive your reward. I love that God gets personal with Daniel at the end of his prophecies. It could be easy to think of God as some distant watcher who looks on at the affairs of the world, but isn't all that interested in individual people. But the truth is so much better. The truth is that God created you out of his love for you. He made you and loves you so much that he died for you so that your sins could be forgiven. That's an incredible truth, but it's a truth that we can hold on to as guaranteed by God. And then it says, go your way and rest. Daniel has been faithfully serving God in his exile in Babylon. He's been prophesying of these extraordinary events that were to come and uh, and impact on the nation of Israel. And now God says, go your way and rest. After everything is done, we can rest. Now, I've been watching quite a bit of the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe recently, and it reminded me, when I read this, of the end of Avengers Endgame, where... Tony Stark is lying there dying and his wife, Pepper Potts, comes up to him and says, it's okay, Tony, you can rest now. He's done the work that he was called to do and he can rest. But the wonderful thing is, rest isn't the last word either because Daniel is told that he will rise again to receive the reward that is due to him. There's that hope of resurrection that was bought on the cross, that was paid for in Jesus' blood. It was bought for you so that you could trust God and know the hope of resurrection. Now, how do we know that this is true? Well, this is where the the nature of the book of Daniel comes to the fore. You may remember in my last video, I mentioned that Daniel is probably the most prophetic book in the Bible. Just to give you an example of that, in the previous chapter, Daniel 11, there were no fewer than 135 prophecies. 135 prophecies in one chapter of the book. And... The incredible thing is, they are fulfilled in detail in the course of history. There's extra biblical, let's say, material outside of the Bible, witness that all of these prophecies, all 135 plus prophecies, came to pass. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that God is trustworthy. It means that God knows the sweep of history. He knows your place 
in that sweep of history. And he wants you to join him in that history. See, the great thing is, these prophecies that have been fulfilled, God's faithfulness, his trustworthiness of his character, are such that it means that we can not just believe in God, but believe on God. That is to say, not just have some head knowledge that God exists, but have a saving faith that God is good, he is trustworthy, he is faithful to you. And he wants you to put your trust in him. That's the message of Daniel. That's the reason for these extraordinarily detailed and fulfilled prophecies, to show that God is worthy of being trusted. So put your trust in God, and may you know his blessings today and always. Take care.